Uh, let's get started. Uh, hi, and greetings to everyone that attend to my session here. In today's session, I'm here to going to introduce the amazing talk called Olama to serve models, along with the, the associated operator I made for deploy Olama instance in Kubernetes clusters. And before we get started, let's introduce where I come from. I'm from Dark Cloud. We are primarily focusing on Kubernetes and trying to cohere it with AI, AI workloads, GPU massive training, etc. And as background, me, Fan Shi Zhang, a software engineer from Dark Cloud, is focusing on AI and Kubernetes. But my stories don't stop the Kubernetes ecosystem. I'm also the contributor to Golang, Vue.js, Launchend for Go and JavaScript, many other communities as well. And by the way, this slide is written in Vue and TypeScript, and it will be open source that you can, everyone can have it. And Except that I'm also the co-founder of Nollebase, an uh, Obsidian-oriented deployment tool for making Obsidian knowledge base into websites, and the GUI, which is a tool for helping front-end developers to co-pilot with AI. Yeah. I know it's kind of boring for everyone to Listen for already three days. I'm going to throw a simple demo for fun. And hopefully this can help everyone to get a better understanding of it. I will try to explain. Uh, what we are doing here is to quickly deploy a model with a lemma and with the on the kind created cluster, it will be able to use the official Olama CRI to interactive interact with it. You see it's fast enough. I ran it on my MacBook Pro, so I think it's very amazing for Kubernetes developers who usually will use kind cluster with the Olama operator, well, you can have coding copilot, code generation, etc. Yeah, that's basically the demo. Well, what about this demo means? That's the topic. Okay, let's get to the journey. As the beginning of the role of infra team as well as developer, I know many of you may understand that deploying the Large language models involve complex steps and management. That's the challenges. And probably some of you may have seen this slide, but I will go really quick for building some fundamental context. So in machine learning field, model is basically a set of matrix with, with factors, which is used to predict the input data with and output the data based on the input. And that's it. But that's not a whole picture. When we zoom out, we will get this visualization of every fundamental building block of each model. What do we do next? We will feed them into GPU and CPU for inference and computation. Yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. Then let's talk about how to deploy. When we have the vectors, we will get a binary file. When we distribute it, there are so many steps. Okay, first one is training, obviously. Or maybe perhaps you want to get some LoRa. When you have the LoRa's, you will need to patch them and merge the weights for running performance or to make it running on lower devices, you will need to quantize them. Sure, that's the steps. Okay, so how can we mount them to the containers or applications? There's two ways in practical. 
First one is to mount with volumes. Okay, we, we have uh, S3 storage and we will put the model in the S3 and we will mount it into the volume. <coughs> the second one is bundle it with images. But those are not very good and that comes problems. Personally, I think there's a limit or boundaries. When distributing models, if we're gonna to bundle all of these things into the single image, what will happen? The image will be large. And if every node will need to pull the image in order to bootstrap the container, then every node will initiate a huge file transfer. No matter what method you are using for mounting and bundling, how, we, how can we effectively have every node pull the images or the weights? How many storage are needed for when we assigning storage for control plane nodes? We don't know. What if a node will have like 100 Lemma 2 instances? What will happen? For each one of Lemma 2 model, there will be 86 gigabytes. For 100 instances, there will be, um, I mean, sorry. Let's say uh, we have 100 different distribution or releases of Lemma or Phi or whatever. We have 100 of them. Different LoRa, different configuration, different patches. Then the node will eventually need to pull every single 100 images, download to the node local storage. That will be a problem. And for serverless scenarios, how can we handle the code booting? Or what will happen when we publish one model, then someone will initiate an inference request really quick that leaves questions. Is that the end? No, not absolutely. Serving is still waiting for us, okay? Managing dependencies across different environments can be tedious and error prone. I bet many of you may have experienced it already. Setting up an environment of Python, CUDA, CONDA, member is quite complex and time consuming. Last one is to get in the model which I've shown you already, it's, there's still a lot of work to do. That's the concepts. Let's get into some real use cases. There, this is the Triton serving example, which is popular model serving tool made by NVIDIA. How many steps would it made? Well, on the slide, it shows with different method. So, Perhaps you need to git clone the serving framework, or perhaps you need to pull the serving Docker image, but that's still. And remember, that's the only one portion of the whole process. Train, distribute, bundle, serving, and inference. This is only serving part. Oh, sorry, let me. Okay, what about a torch serve? That's a lot. <coughs> I know that's a framework, like fundamental building block, but still, there are so many steps that we need to automate and make it more simply. Okay, let me see, okay. I know some of the companies may build the, their own serving tools with PyTorch serve. <coughs> But what about the open source community? Not very much. Okay, I'm here to introduce the Olama. One tool that simplifies the process of transforming, merging, composing, deploying, and serving for large language models. It's lightweighted enough to have single binary to ship with without literally no dependencies. No Conda, no PyTorch, no extra lemma.cpp setup. It's universal. Works on pretty much every known platforms. 
so the boundary of hardware or drivers are no longer a problem. This is how you can customize the model with Alama. You can add multiple layers of LoRa, you can pre-configure the parameters, and even doing some prompt engineering. As you see, the structure of this file and the syntax is the same as Dockerfile. And yes, the way to build and bundle the image of the model is the same as Docker. While it's still compatible with OCI standards, if it's, const <laughs> if it's compatible to OCI standards, can we reuse the hover or registry? The answer is yes. Just like Docker, Olama can push and pull the models to the registry. If you have a hover, then that's all you need. Push and pull, that's your distribution. Your work is done. What about serving? The, is it the same as Docker? Hard to, hard to distinguish. A single run command made it easy to serve across all platforms, environments, include IoT, Raspberry Pi, everything. I know it sounds like I'm a team of Olama and promoting Olama to every one of you, but I'm sorry, I'm not. Let me introduce another thing. What have we done? It's Olama operator. This is our one simple install to go plugin to bring Olama to Kubernetes clusters. And just forgot about the downsides of Olama and challenges. Let's talk about the Olama operator's feature. We got model caching, model preloading, scale with replicas, apply correct resource limits, and achieve operator automation. Why? I know Olama currently or recently supported the model pooling and caching, even a little bit thin layer to achieve load balancing. But actually, back in the days when I was implementing this Olama op operator, they are not supported. Okay, for the other problems, for general Alama servers, there's no way to set resource limit. Means if you start a new Alama instance, it will eat up your available memories, GPUs, CPUs, anything, which makes it too hard to control. And what if you want to create a model mesh for the models? It's possible, it's not possible for single Lama. But we here brought the power of deployments and replica set to help scale the models, make it to replicate. So everyone can, every user, they can have their own Olama instance. Which means all different models can run simultaneously. Besides all of that, I made it Kubernetes, which means the Olama operator works with any Kubernetes certified clusters. Kind, KSRS, Minikube, everything is the same. <coughs> it's cloud agnostic. Okay, deploy on any cloud provider or on-premises. I have it in my home lab, which I will have three instances of models. It's IoT friendly, uh, deploy on uh, any cloud provider or, I mean, okay, sure, the Raspberry Pi. I have tested on Raspberry Pi 4B. It's working. Loads of the other operators or controllers often requires additional plugins or CRDs to be installed before running, but Olama operator is not. I made it as simple as possible. So no additional plugins, no additional CRDs. One command, install, then you're go. It's to use, easy to use. Install the operator controller with single one command, that's it. And you can create the model CR. Well, then connect it. 
Or perhaps you dislike the taste of Kubernetes YAML manifest. I made a CRI called Colama to help you deploy. It's also a Kuber Cube Control plugin too, so you can use it as a Kube Control sub command too. Yes, that's as much as easy you would see. For scaling, it's easy too. Just like any replica set or deployment, you modify the replica field, make it to 10, 5. On the slide, it's 5. Then it will scale. That's the features. But let's talk about the overall architecture or the primary challenge I faced when I'm making the Olama operator. Here's the corresponding component it will interact with. The major parts are the, let me use cursor to point out. Can everyone see it? Okay. This is the model pool and those are inference server. With down this bottom one, it <coughs> it's a shared PVC. Why? Because when I said previously, when, when we need to distribute the models, we will need to have each node to pull their model or images separately. Instead of that, in the Olama operator, I created a shared PVC and a model pool to share the models to each of the inference server. So once, it, once, the, mode, once the model is preloaded or downloaded, it's cached. Next time you create another instance of it again or scale it, it will no longer to download additional models or files. Okay, let's break it down. For inference server, you may be wondering, how does the model pool work for to cache for the inference server? Sure, I will explain it. For a lemma server, each time we call the Olama pool, an OCI image will be pulled from the registry. And the Olama server will save it without any modification. Okay, notice it. Without any modification. That means it's unpacked. It's still in OCI image. It's not preloaded, not configured. Once a new request performed from chat completions comes in, the Olama server will check if the model in the cache or the presence. If not, it will put again if it is exists then it will unpack it and preload it into memories. Or if it's unpacked or loaded already, it will load into memories with a map with a swap mechanism. With that, okay, sorry, that's the end of the slide. Let me see. The last one is to bootstrap the Lama CPP server to serve the models. Um, or in other words, the models will be checked for existence before inference. To deal with that, we have the model pool. And if you listen to now, you may wondering, aren't the users of Alama are non-Kubernetes users? Yes, that's a great question. The concepts of the, or the initial idea of Olama operator is because I want to bring Olama to Kubernetes, not to enforce every Olama users to use Kubernetes, because I saw the similarity between model file and Docker file. I think the transition of cloud native is the same. If we can have Docker, Docker file to transform for the traditional applications. What about the nowadays or future traditional models? Can we make them all Dockered or containered? Yeah, that's the concept. 
there are still pretty much work needs to be done. For example, I made a little pretty documentation site for it, but it's still missing some parts, like for example, the use cases, the model list, they are not incomplete. And some of the automation and more far beyond the automation, they are all missing. It's open source already six months. I appreciate everyone that would like to contribute it. You can scan the QR codes for documentation site or the repository. This project has been exist for like, let me calculate, four months. And it runs really well in my home lab, in my company. Everyone is using it to, uh, how can I say, integrate with Kepa's GPT to analyze some of the cluster issues. I can't make it without any support of the communities, but I want to shout out to the community for the following improvements, and I want to discuss to everyone here and on the or online, or the future coming to the following items. The first one is to, how about let's keep development and improve the new coming OCI volume standards? Or how about we can have the container D or Docker to fit in the Olama OCI image content type? So we can use Dragonfly to cache them, to distribute the images more than, more faster than my Model Pro is. Or how about better pulling? Can we improve it? Or how can we use Dragonfly to better distribute the so large models like Lemon 3405B is like 800 of gigabytes, that's too large, yeah. Or perhaps we can add some of, some of the load balancing and routing capabilities to improve how the queue or response or request is processed because the current implementation of Olama, they have a little tiny thing load balancing area where I can imagine for some of the open source or other companies, they are trying to group the different models into different sizes and use generic or intelligence capabilities to route different prompts to different models. That would be better. With all of that, that's the end of today's session. I bet many of you may asking how to make this slide. I open sourced it and it was, it was built on top of the codes. We could ask you to give me some sum up on the feedback of the Kube control, no, I mean the KubeCon events. And that's it. Any questions? Okay. Okay. to deploy uh, ML models to the edge, and how would you compare that to some of the other tools that, that, that they've been showcasing here at the oh, Dev? You mean the was a match? Yes. Oh, okay. There come some downsides. Mm, currently, Olama is depending on Lama CPP, which is kind of slow to preload the models, which will result in the edge nodes to have longer code booting time cost. And I believe for current or now, it's not possible to have Olama to handle the request faster than Wasm Edge or their Gaia Net. I think that's the problem. But 
I know I have experienced some um, like VRM, they have better capability to provide better throughput or better performance. Perhaps we can, um, how can I say? The idea of Olama operator here is I want to bring the concepts of model file and the workflow it includes to Kubernetes system. And I believe we can enforce or encourage Kubernetes ecosystem to build a better Olama or cooperate with them to integrate with VRM or Wasm Edge to provide better edge capabilities. Was my answer clear? Yeah, that was very clear, thanks. Okay. Any other? Uh 可能还是每个人要单独自己去漏的是吧对的对的核心就在于把这个share的pvc自动化加载然后继续mount到给其他的推理服务器 哦，那个我是其实是做OpenAI的社区的，就是我们是做云编协同这个场景，然后其实就是包括你前面讲的，后面讲的那个Lord 做的就是我我我理解下来就是说你最后其实部署的话其实其实就是本身这个当然这个拉那个欧拉嘛这个它会类似于多个这样的一个方式然后把这个大模型管理起来然后你基于这个工具做了一个这个欧拉嘛的一
，我尝试 demo 的时候，我也发现，时至今日 o l a m a 依然或者说其他的任何推理服务器，他们都没有集成一个好的 tracing 的系统，能够让我知道它推理到哪一步了，推理到哪一个 pipeline 了，什么 stage， 它输出了多少 token。如果是 stream 的话，它在等什么？它是命中 cache 了还是命中没有命中 cache？ 这都是尚未解决问题。然后，因为 o l a m a 它实际上只是提供了一层管理的包装嘛，它背后还是基于的 l a m a CPP。那我觉得这个问题，我们也许可以提给 l a m a CPP。然后，在我前天的这个 session 里面，我有啊，我找一下。我有提到说，会希望建议社区，我们一起去实现一个通用的 health check 的接口实现。比方说，给 Pytorch 先做一层，然后再推广到其他的这个框架上。对，这个确实是我现在没有办法解决，但我建议说，社区一起推动这个事情。好的，谢谢。嗯。Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you use the the Olam operator in production, and uh, if you have maybe a timeline for when it will be ready for production. Uh, we're not pushing it or releasing it to pr production, but I personally use it a lot, and my company for development timeline we will use it with KBS K. Kubernetes GPT to analyze the issues in cluster. So I can say we're still in a testing area, and I believe the reason I didn't push it to the production is because I think Olama is kind of a transition state of our cloud native AI workloads. I don't see it as the final state. So it's more like an experiment. And I want to bring the concept of model file and encourage the OCI volume KEP to go even further beyond to build a better model distribution, serving, etc. Yeah, that's it. So um, may I ask you, whether it, have you tried to use Olama or have you experienced any difficulties that I can maybe try to understand and plot a timeline to release it? Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I'm not a model, uh, um, a machine learning engineer, I'm a platform engineer. Um, so we're working with like a different runtimes and we allow to, uh, for users to deploy their own models on a Kubernetes cluster. So I was, I was wondering if this would be like a, um, an option for users to uh, write an Olama function and like deploy it to a cluster. And, uh, it could automate things for them in, uh, in production. Mm, I believe that would be awesome, yeah. Thank you. Uh, anyone is raising their hands? Okay, how about that's the end of the session? And hopefully everyone can have your trip in Hong Kong well. Yeah, thank you for coming.